In the endless passage of time, from when humanity first discovered itself until today, one mystery that continues to haunt is the subtle and magical power of the human brain. Perhaps in the chaotic space of this universe, our brain is one of the most exquisite works of art that has ever existed. Why does it have the magical ability to create, think and feel in incredibly complex ways? The answer lies deep in the human adventure of discovery, where the wonder of the brain is not only celebrated, but is also an endless source of inspiration for our progress and understanding of life. The human brain is the central organ of the human nervous system and together with the spinal cord forms the central nervous system. It is divided into three main parts, cerebrum, brainstem and cerebellum. The brain controls most of the body's activities thanks to the function of processing, integrating and coordinating information received from the sensory system and then sending corresponding instructions to the organs in the body. The brain is surrounded by the skull at the head. The cerebrum represents the largest part of the human brain and is made up of two cerebral hemispheres. Each hemisphere has a nucleus containing white matter and a surface portion called the cerebral cortex containing gray matter. The outer layer of the cerebral cortex is called the neocortex and the inner layer is called the primary cortex. The neocortex is made up of six layers of neurons while the primary cortex is made up of three or four layers. Each hemisphere is usually divided into four lobes, which are frontal lobe, temporal lobe, parietal lobe, and occipital lobe. The frontal lobe is responsible for executive functions including self-control, planning, reasoning, and abstract thinking, while the occipital lobe has only functions related to vision. In each lobe, cortical regions are associated with specific functions, such as the sensory cortex, motor cortex, and association cortex. Although the left and right hemispheres are generally similar in shape and function, some functions are assigned to a certain side, such as language skills on the left and visuospatial skills on the right. The two cerebral hemispheres are connected by bundles of limbic nerves and a larger bundle called the corpus callosum. The brainstem is the middle part that connects the brain to the spinal cord. The brainstem is divided into three main parts, midbrain, pons, and middellar. The cerebellum is connected to the brainstem through three bundles of the median cerebellar nerve. In the brain, there is a ventricular system consisting of four interconnected ventricles capable of secreting and circulating cerebrospinal fluid. The subcortex contains many important structures, including the thalamus, hypothalamus, pineal gland, prethalamic area, pituitary gland, and hypothalamus. Limbic system, including the amygdala and hippocampus. Nuclei of the anterior wall, including the nucleus of the basal ganglia. Basic structure of the forebrain and the three paraventricular organs. The cells that make up the brain include neurons and supporting glial cells. There are more than 86 billion neurons and an equal number of other cell types in the brain. The brain works by connecting nerve cells and releasing neurotransmitters in response to nerve impulses. Connected neurons form complex neural pathways, neural circuits, and neural networks. The brain is protected by the skull, suspended in a fluid called cerebrospinal fluid and isolated from the circulatory system by the blood-brain barrier. Despite many layers of protection, the brain is still susceptible to disease, infection or damage from strong impacts or strokes. The brain is susceptible to degenerative disorders, such as Parkinson's disease, multiple sclerosis, and dementias such as Alzheimer's disease. Certain types of mental illness, such as schizophrenia and clinical depression, appear to be associated with brain dysfunction. Both benign and malignant tumors can occur in the brain, but often they are metastases that have spread to the brain from other areas of the body. The study of the structure of the brain is called neuroanatomy. The field that studies brain function is called neuroscience. Scientists use many different techniques to study the brain. For example, studying brain samples taken from animals and comparing them with human brains. Medical imaging technologies, 
such as functional neuroimaging and electroencephalogram EEG, play an important role in exploring the brain. In addition, the medical history of a person with a traumatic brain injury also gives us information about the function of each part of the brain. The field of brain research continues to evolve, passing through philosophical, experimental, and theoretical phases. A new phase seems to be emerging in neuroscience, simulation of brain activity. In culture, spiritual philosophy over the centuries has tried to resolve the question of the nature of consciousness and the problem of mind and body. In the 19th century, there was a popular pseudoscience called phrenology, whose followers believed that brain shape determined a person's personality. In science fiction, brain implants were first mentioned in works such as 1942's Donovan's Brain. If we want to understand better, we should learn about the structural components of the brain. The average adult brain has a mass of about 1.2 to 1.4 kilograms to 0.9 to 3.1 pounds, accounting for 2% of total body weight and a volume of about 1,130 cc in women and 1,260 cc in men. Mass varies considerably between individuals, with the reference range for men being 1,180 to 1,620 grams to 0 0.6023, 0.57 pounds and for women being 1,030 to 1,400 grams to 0.7 to 3.09 pounds. The cerebrum, consisting of the cerebral hemispheres, is the largest component of the brain and lies above other structures. The outer region of the cerebral hemispheres is called the cerebral cortex, which contains gray matter, which is made up of layers of cortical neurons. Each cerebral hemisphere is divided into four main brain lobes, frontal lobe, parietal lobe, temporal lobe, and occipital lobe. Some documents also list three additional brain lobes, central lobe, marginal lobe, and cerebral lobe. The central lobe includes the precentral gyrus and postcentral gyrus. It's sometimes mentioned because of its rather unique functional role. The brainstem or brainstem is attached to the cerebrum above the midbrain. The brainstem consists of three parts, midbrain, pons, and medulla. Behind the brainstem is the cerebellum. The cerebrum, brainstem, cerebellum, and spinal cord are covered by three layers of meninges. The outer layer of hard membrane is called the dura mater. The membrane in the middle is called the arachnoid material, and the thin, soft inner membrane is called the pia mater. Between the arachnoid membrane and the pia mater are the subarachnoid space and cerebrospinal fluid reservoir. The outermost membrane of the cerebral cortex basement membrane of the pia mater is called glia limitans, which plays a very important role in the structure of the blood-brain barrier. The living brain is very flexible, with a consistency similar to a piece of tofu. Layers of cortical neurons make up most of the gray matter, while myelinated axons deep in the cortex make up the white matter. White matter accounts for nearly half of the total brain mass. The living brain is very flexible, with a consistency similar to a piece of tofu. Layers of cortical neurons make up most of the gray matter, while myelinated axons deep in the cortex make up the white matter. White matter accounts for nearly half of the total brain mass. Each hemisphere is usually divided into four main lobes, frontal lobe, parietal lobe, temporal lobe, and occipital lobe. They are named after the skull bones that surround them. Each lobe of the brain performs one two to specialized functions, although they may overlap. The surface of the brain folds into gyri and sulci, many of which are named for their location, such as the frontal gyrus or central sulcus. Many small variations appear in the second and third folds. The outer surface of the brain is called the cerebral cortex, which consists of stacked layers of gray matter. It is 2 for millimeters 0.079 to 0.157 in thick and folds deeply into folds that give it a wrinkled appearance. Below the cerebral cortex is the white matter of the brain. The largest cortex is the neocortex, which is made up of six layers of neurons. The rest is all primitive cortex, built from three or four layers of neurons. 
The cerebral cortex is divided into about 50 functional areas called Brodmann areas. These areas look completely different when viewed under a microscope. Cortical areas are divided into two main categories according to function, motor cortex and sensory cortex. The primary motor cortex is located behind the frontal lobe and just in front of the somatosensory area, capable of sending signals through axons down to motor neurons in the brainstem and spinal cord. The primary sensory areas receive signals from sensory nerves and sensory nerve bundles through the nuclear relay stations of the thalamus. The primary sensory areas include the visual cortex of the occipital lobe, the auditory cortex of the temporal and insula lobes, and the sensory cortex of the parietal lobe. The remaining areas of the cerebral cortex are called association areas. They receive input from sensory areas and the lower part of the brain and are involved in complex cognitive processes such as perception, thinking, and decision-making. The frontal lobe is responsible for controlling attention, abstract thinking, behavior, problem-solving, physical reactions, and personality in humans. The occipital lobe is the smallest lobe of the brain, responsible for the functions of image reception, visual spatial processing, motion and color recognition. Inside the occipital lobe, there is a lobule called the cuneus. The temporal lobe controls auditory and visual memory, language, and some functions related to hearing and speech. Inside the brain are the ventricles, where cerebrospinal fluid is produced and circulated. Below the corpus callosum is the septum pellucidum that separates the lateral ventricles. Below the lateral ventricles is the thalamus. The lower front part of the thalamus is called the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus leads to the pituitary gland. Behind the thalamus is the brainstem. The basal ganglia or basal nucleus is a set of structures located deep within the cerebral hemispheres involved in the function of regulating behavior and movement. The largest component of the basal ganglia is the striatum, with other components including the globus pallidus, substantia nigra, and subthalamic nucleus. The striatum is divided into a ventral and dorsal part. The striatum includes the ventral nucleus and olfactory tubercle, and the striatum includes the caudate nucleus and putamen. The internal capsule separates the putamen and globus pallidus from the lateral ventricles and thalamus. The caudate nucleus lies close to and surrounds the outer part of the lateral ventricle. A thin sheet of neurons, called the premaxillary nucleus, lies in the deepest cleft of the symbius sulcus between the insular cortex and the striatum. Some basic forebrain structures are located anterior to the striatum. These include the nucleus pulposus, diagonal band of Broca, substantia innominata, and medial septal nucleus. These structures play an important role in the production of neurotransmitters and acetylcholine, which are then distributed throughout the brain. The forebrain in general and the putamen in particular are considered the main cholinergic products of the central nervous system. Chemicals are transmitted to the striatum and neocortex. The cerebellum is divided into three lobes, anterior lobe, posterior lobe, and nodal lobe. The anterior and posterior lobes are connected by the pupa. The cerebellar cortex is thinner than the cerebral cortex, forming narrow, curved horizontal grooves. The nodular velvet lobe is located in the lower middle part of the anterior and posterior lobes. The cerebellum is located at the back of the skull, below the occipital lobe, but they do not stick together because they are separated by the tentorium. The cerebellum connects to the brain stem through three pairs of nerve bundles called the cerebellar peduncles. The superior peduncle connects to the midbrain, the middle peduncle connects to the medulla oblongata, and the lower peduncle connects to the pons. The medulla inside the cerebellum contains white matter, while the many-folded cerebellar cortex contains gray matter. The interior and posterior lobes of the cerebellum appear to be responsible for coordinating and smoothing complex body movements, while the nodal lobes appear to be involved in maintaining balance, although their function of them is not yet precisely known, is still being debated.
The brainstem is located below the cerebrum, consisting of three parts, midbrain, pons, and medullar. It is located toward the back of the skull on the quadrate bone and ends at the foramen magnum of the occipital bone. The brainstem connects to the spinal cord, which is surrounded by the vertebral column. Ten twelfths pairs of cranial nerves originate directly from the brainstem. The brainstem contains many cranial and peripheral nerve nuclei, as well as nuclei involved in the regulation of essential movements such as breathing, oculomotor movements, and balance. The reticular formation, an irregularly concentrated network of nuclei, is located within and along the length of the brainstem. The brain is a perfect combination of many factors. So the question here is why can our brains shrink? One of the most common causes of brain shrinkage is a lack of mental stimulation and challenge. When the brain is not used or stimulated enough, neural connections can weaken and decline. This often happens when a person is not mentally active enough, has little exposure to new information, or lives in a stimulating environment. In addition, a number of other factors such as age, brain disease, stress, and tension can also contribute to brain shrinkage. For example, in the case of Alzheimer's disease or other conditions related to brain decline, connections between nerve cells can break down, leading to brain shrinkage. To avoid brain shrinkage and maintain mental health, it is important to maintain a healthy lifestyle with enough mental stimulation and regularly seek ways to learn and grow. Our video is here. Thank you all for accompanying me. Don't forget to leave your comments to make the next videos better. Goodbye.